Okay, good morning and welcome to Daily 3D Revolve. Today I'm going to be doing a Design Spark Mechanical and I'm going to be showing you guys how I add the textures uh, to my models after I'm done with them. A, a subscriber had asked if I could show them, show him how to uh, add the textures. So I created a video uh, on how to add textures in Design Spark Mechanical, but it's a little bit uh, better if you add them in Rhino. So we're going to go ahead and use a file that I already created. It's the Punisher uh, Rubber Ink Stamper. So we'll go ahead and open that up. I'll uh, go step by step. So um, now the uh, Rhino you can actually download. I believe they have a uh, pretty pretty lengthy trial period. I think mine was uh, I want to say 180 days. Yeah, it's quite long. So. Um, or maybe it's 90, three months. It's about three months. So, okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, open that one up. We'll go to the uh, Punisher rubber stamp. This was a uh, model that I had created a little while back. Um, this is designed to print uh, this piece here in hard plastic, and then you print this, the stamp part in rubber, and then you just hot glue this to here, and then you have a stamper. So the first thing you need to do is, is with your model is you need to go ahead and do a save as and save it as a STL file. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We'll put it on the desktop and then we'll hit save. And then we can go ahead and close Design Spark Mechanical. We can close this folder. So here's our STL file. So I have Rhino 7 right here. So we'll go ahead and drag that on top of Rhino 7. And then you're going to get this uh, box here. Uh, and then you're going to, then you can go ahead and choose which one you want to use. I use the perspective window, so we'll double click on that. And then you can right mouse click and kind of scroll this around to where you want it to be. So we'll go to there. So the first thing we want to do, I want to create a uh, material for this. Uh, so we're going to go over here to the uh, Rhino material tab and then we're going to click that plus to add and then we're going to use this first option here which is import from material library. Um, I'm going to make this a metal instead of plastic because it just looks cooler so we'll go metal and then we're going to go uh, satin metal and then I'm going to do it in a blue so we'll go uh, use the satin blue anodized aluminum and then what you want to do is when you have this selected and this color comes in, you want to right mouse click on it and you want to come to the top first option, which is assigned to object. Okay, now you're going to get that. Now we want to make this a rubber type material. So I'm going to hit um, the plus there and then we'll go import from library. And then I don't believe I have any type of rubber materials in here. So we're going to go ahead and just go, um, let me try organic, see if that there's a rubber in there. Some blank flowers for grass. No, there isn't really any organic material. So we're just going to make this um, textile. Let's see, let's try textiles, see if there's anyone in there. There's a felt, there's a carpet, there's burlap. Uh, gauze, rug, a pattern, gray fabric. I don't really see any rubber material. There's an outdoor mat. Um, yeah, no, no, no uh, rubber material. So what we'll do at that point is just go with a uh, plastic, and then we'll do a um, black opaque. Oh, actually, I want it to be red if there's a red one. Just do gray. We'll do a gray op opaque plastic just to uh, make it kind of easy to see. And then we want to do the same there. Right mouse click, assign. And the, you're, gonna, you're not going to be able to view this until you do some kind of a view. So we'll have to either do a rendered view. Oh, I like ray trace. Uh, really um, pops as far as uh, colors colors go. So we'll um, we'll go ahead and let that render. That this is um, the highest resolution uh, ray trace engine you can use. With ray trace does a thousand samples, 
And now the second thing I do here is I'll go up to the rendering window, come down here to the backdrops, make sure that says solid, and then I'll click here. I'll usually add a um, kind of a medium gray to that. Now this one, I was going to make that red. So to do that, we'll come up here, we'll go to this color here, and then we'll click the color, and then we'll just add a, a reddish color. I think red would be better to show up as a stamp. So here it is right here. So we'll let this we'll let this trace through ray trace to maybe halfway. We don't have to do the entire thing. And then the other options that you can do is come up here to the globe, which is the rendering options. You can add a sunlight to it if it's if it's too dark, or you can add a, a skylight. Um, I don't typically add those unless it's uh, unless the part's really dark. I think this is okay. And then you might want to just uh, rotate it. So you can see both and to rotate I'm just right mouse clicking and then moving it but remember every time you rotate or every time you make a change when you're in the ray trace uh, process it starts off starts back at zero so keep that in mind um, usually if you have a fast computer it does a thousand uh, ray trace uh, samples or cycles it does it pretty quickly so and right now we're already at 400, but I'm not going to I'm not going to do go all the way to a thousand. So when I want the when I want the image, uh, I'll go ahead and do a uh, on your key keyboard on a PC. It's the Windows symbol right next to the Alt key, Windows Shift S together. You get this window, and then you want to take that little plus up there to the corner, and then you want to drag drag out like this. Let go takes a snippet then you want to come over to your find your paint program then you want to click there and then do a control V which is paste I like to do the crop just to make sure and then I'll come up here to file I'll do save as save it as a JPEG and then I'll just give this I'll just call that stamp save it on the desktop hit save and then I'll go ahead and close it and then I'll close this window here and say no and uh, now we're done. So this is how I uh, save the, uh, or how I add textures uh, to my uh, Design Spark mechanical models. I add them in Rhino. Uh, Rhino is a lot better than adding textures than it is uh, in Design Spark mechanical. But Design Spark mechanical isn't really designed to add textures to things, although you can. Um, it's not as good as Rhino. Um, and there are other programs that are actually even better for, for adding textures. But um, okay, that's going to end today's tutorial on uh, how to add uh, a couple of textures to uh, a Design Spark mechanical model in uh, Rhinoceros 7 or Rhino 7. Okay, thank you for watching.